So this is Judas. I completed him two months before his contest deadline. So that meant that I could sit back, relax, and enjoy the two months leading up until my first in-person Briarfest as a much needed and deserved break. And honestly, I was just sitting here relaxing until she showed up. No, we definitely don't want to go there. Don't even think about it. Ugh, I'm already thinking about it. Okay, let me just explain what's happening here. This is a briar and this is a stone. I only really collect briars and those are the models that you predominantly see in all of my videos, but I recently did buy my very first stone. She has been on my mind, like constantly on my mind. Stone is an independent model horse company based and produced in the USA. For 2024, in conjunction with Briarfest, Stone was hosting their very first Best Customs Contest. And if you know me, you know I love a good contest. Like how hard could it be to make a drastic custom in two months? No, stop. Darren, you always do this to yourself. You have to take a break. You finished Judas. Relish in the glory and rest. Move on to a new project. No, 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 not like that. Something simple. No, 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 no. Try again. Ugh. Okay. Well, this is gonna be a lot harder than we anticipated. Uh, yeah. We're gonna have to do that contest too. So this is a Peter Stone Palouse, and this was the sculpture that Peter Stone required you to start with for their Equilocity Art of the Horse contest. So I wanted to convert her into this standing Clydesdale because that was pretty much as dramatic as I could get, and she needed to be solid enough that I could take her on the plane with me without damaging her. No crazy hair tendrils or anything like that. Immediately, I got chopping with my hacksaw. I decided to enter the drastic category. There was also a finish work category, but the first step is always just cutting the horse up into a bunch of bits. This works equally as a therapy if I have any pent up rage or aggression. I take it all out on plastic horses. Then I went to my garage, got in my sexy paint suit and uh, shower cap and gloves and respirator. <laughs> this is like way overkill for this very dramatic footage of me sanding down the seams of this horse. I'm using a heat gun to reposition her legs. And I always try this and it never works and I end up just ripping all of the legs off anyways. Like, like there, I just ripped it off and now I'm just cutting them all off. So I tried. I did recently buy an actual heat gun, so I'm hoping that it's actually more effective than the embossing tool that I currently have. But the paint suit was like not needed. There was barely any debris coming off of this horse. I think I honestly just wanted to put it on and I just cut away until I had a pile of horse bits. Then I had to reconstruct her back together, so I used that toilet paper roll filler. It's my classic. And I drilled holes into all of the leg pieces and then inserted wires and had to rebuild the frame. She had basically no chest left, so that was all going to be a new shoulder. And I use hot glue to just lightly set that, and then when everything's good, I will like super glue it and use baking soda to solidify everything really well. Once I have like a standing horse, it's a lot easier to manage things and plan everything out. And this is me filling the head full of baking soda and attaching the wire inside of there. And then we had a horse, a standing horse. She looks pretty good here. You definitely can't see that she was once a trotting thoroughbred. Then I create the base of the neck using some tin foil. This is just to create the silhouette and fill and shape and make sure the length is right. Everything looks good. Then I'm using my smooth on freeform air fast to fill in all of those gaps. I have a separate video on that and how it works and everything about it, so go check that out. This stuff just is really lightweight and really easy to just mash onto the horse. And I don't try too, too hard to make this really smooth or accurate. We're just going for shape here and I can sand everything down later. 
And I will do this in two parts if I need to, but it dries really quickly. This stuff sets really fast, so it helps me create a solid horse that's easy to move around and work on. I also added some filler to all of the legs because I'm gonna be sculpting Clydesdale feathers on her, just a base for that to happen. So then once she's all done and cured, we can take her back to the Dremel station and Dremel everything down. This is where I needed the paint suit and I'm not wearing it, so I don't know, you can't fix stupid. Chaotic mess of a desk. I am gluing the ears back on. So I actually used the original Palouse ears because they're really, like, really solid and really firm, so I knew they wouldn't break in transportation. <laughs> Then I took her back for more sanding after I inserted the ears. I, I don't exactly know why, but that's the order this footage was in. And sanding it, sanding it all good. There was a lot of sanding that had to happen here. I like to do that interchangeably so as I sculpt it's easier to manage the amount of sanding that needs to be done. And then I get right to it by adding some magic sculpt. <laughs> Pretty much started with the feathers because I knew that was going to be the trickiest part to get right. So I blocked those all in using a flat spoon tool. I create some of the texturing and then I smooth over that with a brush tipped in isopropyl alcohol and then using a silicone blending tool I can refine the details out further. I did the same method for the little chin hairs and I work on one side of the horse at a time so I'm just sculpting the feathers kind of on this side and around like the front of the leg but the other side of the leg I'll actually just leave because I don't I have to rest the horse on my lap and I don't want to smush everything I've just done so it's easiest for me to just do this kind of one side at a time and I try not to push too much I like to let things cure so I don't completely destroy them by handling the horse I was experimenting here by doing less super fine details in the hair and like letting things be more paintable because I'm finding that a smoother surface is actually easier to paint than a super textured hair surface so I'm learning how to refine my style further as I go with each of these projects. I actually originally wanted Mabel to be a stallion, but then in the process of sculpting her and creating her, I felt like she gave me more mare vibes and she just looked a lot more elegant than I originally intended. So I pivoted and turned her into a mare. So at this point she's like coming together, but the neck was way too long. And I compared her to this Peterstone draft and she actually looked like a custom of him, which is crazy. But I was using him and other briars to kind of measure the neck and decide if I felt like it was too long and it was definitely too long. So off with that, we hacksaw it off. You can't be married to anything that you do. to take some documentation of that continue to saw off the remainder and then reattach and when I say reattached and smoothed over it looked a lot better so I was glad that I had done that then I continue with the clay to add more muscle features such as the shoulder smoothing everything out with my thumb using a combination of tools this horse doesn't have a ton of definition draft horses don't they're kind of just like thick chunks and a lot of this got covered by the end hair but you still want an accurate base to be sculpted there and this was all like brand new sculpted shoulders so I just continue to move on and if I get bored of something I move on to a different section of the horse and I kind of just work with where my creativity takes me I don't put too much pressure to like finish one thing I kept most of the original face actually Palouse has a really nice eye and a nice face so pretty much all the only thing remaining original was that eyeball I also spent some time sanding in between these layers to make sure that everything was smoothing out correctly before we put hair on we want the horse to be really solid really smooth so that you're not sanding over the 
weird lumps in between the hairs. It just it becomes too much of a mess. So I layer on the hair by applying noodles and then I smooth out all of those edges with a silicone shaper tool and then I go in with my flat spoon and create the mane. And I did this mane in several layers so I actually did an initial pass and then I added more tendrils in when things were cured. So you don't have to do the whole mane in one go. I do like to do like one side of the mane in one go because it helps with the flow. But I did go add more small details after it was cured. And I did that a few times and I check it with primer and just see how much little detailing I want. I also drilled a hole in the bum and I created this epoxy tail base and I like to do this off of the model so I like to sculpt it separately and then once I have the hair detailing on I will attach it to the model and I make sure that all the legs and everything are good too like the sculpting of the legs so that I'm not having to get a sanding sponge or stick into the crevice there and this tail was supposed to wrap around one of the legs a little bit so it needed to be attached to be able to finish up the detailing on that one side. Adding the little pieces of wispies was super fun and I wanted her to be like wind blowing. And I wanted an elegant Clydesdale-y name for her. I actually wanted to call her Rosie originally. Just one of those names that's like very pretty and like draft type. My friend Haley said she looks like a fable, but she's a draft horse. So I was like, well, I will name her Mabel then. So that's how her name was created because she does look like a fable, just a different version. I like it, I think it's cute. So I continue with the hair on the other side until I'm happy with everything. So I'll just let the footage play and you can watch that process. Then once she's mostly done, I did put a coat of primer on her and then I continue to sand everything until smooth and basically start the prepping phase. And this takes as long as it needs to take. And then I prime again until nice and opaque. And then I can send her over to the airbrush studio. So this was her all sculpted and in primer, and I think she turned out really cute. Everything else was essentially touched to some degree. So I'm base coating with my Iwata Eclipse in a gray color that actually didn't look much different from the primer itself, so it was kind of a waste of time. <laughs> And then I added in some neutral gray, extra dark pan pastel. And I'm using makeup brushes to apply that onto the model. You can see that I kind of go in a circular motion to kind of like blend it into the horse. And I'm following the textural pattern of the sculpture. So I'm putting darkness in the troughs of the sculpture and like letting the highlights be a lighter color. And then I didn't actually seal the model. I left this pastel on the horse as is, and then I started my hair by hair texturing method on top of the pastel. So the white wasn't gonna be like a solid white. It was gonna be pulling up color of the pastel. And I think this worked really well in creating a more blended look. So I was really pleased with it. And I'm using a fan brush. I don't know what brand of brush this is. Princeton makes a nice one. I've tried a couple. You kind of have to go into a store and like touch them and see which one you like the best. I've tried soft and stiff. It totally depends on your preference. This one is a bit softer. But I continue to roan the body and the hair growth 
pattern. I start to map out the white markings so that I don't have to round into those areas. So the legs are going to be white and the belly is going to have like a big white patch on it. So I'm taking a fatter round brush and just making the layout for those markings, but like not super intricate, just to basically figure out where they're supposed to be. And I've been playing with hair texturing a lot lately, so I'm actually leaving a lot of texture to be inferred here. So I'm not going to paint all of these whites to a solid. I'm going to allow them to show through the hair growth pattern of the horse, but I'm still making sure that everything I'm painting here follows the direction of the hair growth. That's the most important part. In the flank area, it can get a little bit intricate and tricky, so I do take like a smaller, finer, pointer brush in there to like get the details right and then I actually wasn't liking how linear everything was looking so I took a makeup brush with a little bit of paint and kind of dry brushed on some irregularities and this helped break up the pattern and make it look a lot more realistic. For the feathers I have a pastel all over there as well so I haven't sealed anything yet and I'm just allowing that paint to pull up some of the color and I will just start to texture the feathers. So I'm going on the high points of the sculpture in the hair detailing and creating the sculpture, leaving some of that shading in the low points. And this doesn't look super realistic in the end because a Clydesdale would have more of a yellowed feather rather than a gray tone feather, but I wanted her to be a unanimous paint job. I'm not always about having things hyper realistic. I pick things for aesthetic reasons over like super accurate. And this model, the sculpture is very aesthetic. So the paint job, I wanted to reflect that as well. There was a point where I thought about painting this horse bay. That would have been a lot simpler in the time frame that I had. Doing all of this in basically a one month's time was a push. It was a stretch. I think she only ended up taking me two and a half weeks though. So I finished long before the deadline, thankfully, but it was a lot of extra work to do all the roaning. I base coat the mane with a dark gray color. And I also airbrush in some of those details a little bit darker because it was hard to see what she was going to look like without those features darkened up. And then I did a three tone mane color. So I have a mid tone and a light tone. So I am just shading out all of that mane, adding in highlight to the tops of the sculpture. And I continue this until I'm happy. And then I would add like a bright white kind of at the crest of the neck where like the roning would be coming in contact with the hair so I just work this for a really long time this is so time consuming it takes days to do this much hair on this much horse and I did end up I think redoing it one or two times so it's not always a super simple process making sure that the color of gray is matched to the rest of the horse is probably the hardest part because gray is really easy to get really cool or really warm and it looks funny if it's not correct. Then using a flesh tone, I paint the muzzle and I use a hairdryer in between layers to quicken things up. And then I continue to paint the details of the face. So I detail out the eye, I add shading around the eye and I do all of this with hand painted acrylic and just like a little bit of water. Sometimes I use a blending gel, but I find water is kind of my best friend. So I shade all the areas so that things don't look flat anywhere. This horse was painted on every single inch of its body and basically refine everything until I'm happy with the final outcome.
Then I went back in and I would retexture and refine all of the white markings. So I kind of was doing this in like a stipply action with this fat brush. This fat brush makes a nice point. I, I don't know, it just works good. It's a synthetic brush and it's like a larger size, but it comes down to a really nice point. Then I went in with a finer brush to really detail out the edging of everything and make it more hair by hair realistic and I just continued this until I was happy. I could have probably done this for another like whole week if I wanted to but eventually we just gotta say she done and so when she done for real we sign the belly with our signature and a really tiny paintbrush. Then I sealed everything really good with Mr. Super Clear. And then I go back in and I gloss the eyeballs and I gloss the feet and the nostrils. And there we have Mabel. Completed in two months time, a drastic custom start to finish, originally trotting Thorbred, now standing drafter. Mabel's story didn't end there. We then had to take her to Briarfest for the in-person contest event. The contest was part of Peter Stone's Equilocity event that took place in the Griffin Gate Hotel in Lexington, Kentucky during the same weekend as the Briarfest event. It was cool because all of the customs entered were on display for the entire weekend. We got to see all of the stone production pieces as well. And there was this cob horse that was painted in the same gray color as Mabel. And I believe that we used the same reference, which is really funny. I was notified on the Friday that she was a finalist in the contest. So they selected three finalists. And then I was invited to come back to the stone dinner. They have like a dinner that you had to buy into. I didn't get tickets for it, but I was able to stand on the sidelines. And all of my friends came to support me, which was really amazing. It is an amazing <laughs> Yay! And Mabel won second place next to Vincent. You can see his entry in the background of these videos. And when I got home from Briarfest, I was able to put Mabel in the cabinet next to Judas, who were both completed in time for their deadlines. And then I was able to sit down and relax what? Who are you kidding? We have two contest entries to make for next year. You better get going, girl. Thank you so much for watching. This has been DJB. If you would like to see how Mabel was actually sculpted and actually painted with full color charts and written tutorial, you can find all of that content on my Patreon.